Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor because you are a faithful God. Father, as we go into this class this afternoon, we ask, O oh Lord, that you grant us understanding. For both the teacher and the learner, you shall grant us understanding in Jesus' name. At the end of this class, may your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Once again, you are all welcome. It's good to see your faces once again. In our last class, I remember I told you that you should read a topic. I told you that you should read a topic on world population or on population. How many of you read? How many That's of you? What you? You are still eating. <laughs> all right. Like I said, you are all welcome. Edward, did you read the topic population? Edward. Yes, sir. Did you read the topic? Yes, sir. Okay. What did you read about? Can you just briefly tell us? Sure. Huh? Edward, I'm listening now. Not the entire head. Elim. Elim. Yeah. How yeah. are you? Sorry, sir. Did you read the topic? Yes, sir. Okay. In simple terms, can you define population, please? Sir, it is the total number of people living together in a particular place. Okay. Is that all? Okay, thank you very much. That's a good one. Precious. Did you read the topic? Precious. Okay, what is population according to you? The population yeah. is the number of people living in an area at a particular time. Oh, beautiful. That's very good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Having said that, I think we already have a knowledge of what this topic is talking about. As it were, please mute yourself. Mute yourselves. Only your video, please. Mute yourself. All right. So let's begin. That is the meaning of population on that slide. It can be seen as the total number of people living in a given geographical area. Population can be seen as the total number of people living in a geographical area. Population can also be seen as the number of people living in an area at a particular time. Now, it doesn't need too much stressing. It is direct and straightforward. The total number of people living in a geographical area is known as population. Now, talking about geographical area, geographical area can be the local government, it can be the state, or it can be the country. So as at the time 
a census is taking place, wherever you are is the population of that place. Now, if you look at the last paragraph of this slide, it says population is dynamic as a result of birth and death rates. What do we mean by something being dynamic? Fate. It means it can change. Changes regularly. Oh, very good. That's very, very good. It changes. That is to say, population of a place is not the same at all time. It changes. That is why we said, as a result of birth rate and death rate, population changes. So it is possible if I'm taking the population of Kaduna now, it is possible after I have taken this the, the, the number of the population, somebody might give birth to triplets. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Somebody yes, uh -huh, may give birth to triplets. So it has, make, it has made the population of that region to be dynamic. Also, after taking the population census of a place, we might record some number of deaths. It has also affected the population of that particular geographical area. So it is dynamic as a result of both birth rate and death rate. So that is population for you. All right, let's look, let's go further. In terms of continents, Asia is the most populous continent in the world. In terms of continent, Asia is the most populous continent in the world, followed by Europe, Africa, North America, South America, and Australia is the least. Now, these population figures you are seeing on this slide, it has changed. These figures you are seeing were taken sometimes ago. I am sure if we go back to the countries that have been mentioned, you will realize that the population, one way or the other, is varying from this. Is that clear? So in terms of continent, of course, you know, when we say Asia, you know the countries that falls under Asia. Edward, mention one Asian country. Yeah, Europe. One Asian country. Edward. Sir? One Asian country. Mention one Asian country. China. Good. China. China is one Asian country. So look at China, Korea, Republic, Japan. All these are countries in Asia. And they have very, very high population. Is that clear? So these are the various areas. In Africa, Nigeria is the most populous country. Nigeria is the most populous country. Faith. Faith. What is the population and what is the estimate of Nigerian population now? Now. Yes. I don't know. Okay, just give me an. Okay, what is the last figure you know? Um, one hundred and seventeen million three hundred and sixty-eight. Faith, that is my figure. I am saying, what is the current one? Bola. What is the current population of Nigeria, Bola? Yes. Two hundred ninety-five. Huh? Two hundred million. Two hundred ninety-five. <laughs> okay, 
Nigeria is having a population right now of over 120, 120. over 190 million people. Huh? Over. Of course, you know, when you talk of population, because we said earlier that population of any place is dynamic, you can only get the estimates. They cannot be precise figures. Are we together, please? You can only get them as estimates. Huh? You estimate the figures. All right. So let's move on. Tachi. I didn't hear you. I <laughs> wait. Okay. Shall you send any notes? Yes, I'm going to send the notes. The note is going to be sent. Okay, sir, don't worry. Just continue. It's all right. Now let's look at some population concepts. Population concepts. Concepts. Number one, we have overpopulation. Overpopulation. And what is overpopulation? This is a situation where the population is more than the available resources in the country. When the population of a country is more than the available resources, then overpopulation has set in. Take, for example, in Nigeria today, when there is an advert for a job, maybe a job for not more than 100 people, you see the way thousands of people apply for that job. So in that situation now, the population is over. Why? Because the available resources cannot go around everyone. The resources available in the country can't go around to everyone. So it is overpopulation. Number two concept, underpopulation. This is where the population is less than available resources of a country. This means that the size of population is so small that when combined with the available resources of a country and given the level of existing technology, it will secure minimum return per head. Can you imagine a situation whereby the population of a country is so large, but the problem, the, the resources is so much or is so large, but the issue is the population now. Are you getting it now? A very good example is a country like Canada. Canada is a country that have very large resource, but the population of that country is small. As it were, that is why the resources of that country is able to go around everyone. So when the resources is able to cater for everyone and you still have more, that is underpopulation. So the population is less than the available resources. That is underpopulation. Any question? Any question? No. OK, let's move on. Another concept is optimum population. Optimum population. From the word optimum, it is a situation optimum. where the population of that country is equal to the available resources. That is to say, when the population of a country can be supported by the available resources in that country to achieve the highest possible standard of living. That is, if you are going to measure the standard of living of every citizen of that country, the resources can meet everyone, then that kind of population is referred to as optimum population. A situation 
whereby the resources is at par with the population. That is optimum population. Another concept is population density. Population density. Population density is defined as the number of persons per unit area of land or per square kilometer. The number of persons per unit area of land or per square kilometer is known as population density. So this is talking about the number of people per square kilometer. You put a, you consider the population of a place and also the land area of that place. When you put this together, it gives you your population density. And for you to get the population density of any area, there is a formula you use. There is a formula you use in calculating the population density of any area. That is the formula for you there. So for you to get the population density of any place, all you need to get is to get your population, you get your total land area, divide them, your answer gives you your population density. The answer gives you your population density. So when you are asked to calculate the population density of a place, just get the population, the total population and the total land area. When you divide it, your answer gives you the population density. Are we together? Another concept is BAT rate. BAT rate. BAT rate, also called natality of a country, it refers to the rate at which children are given birth to in a country. The rate at which children are given birth to in a country is known as the BAT rate birth rate. Generally speaking, high birth rate may lead to population increase or overpopulation, while low birth rate can lead to low population. So that is another concept, birth rate. And it's talking about what is the rate at which children are being given birth to in a country. So naturally, when there is a high birth rate, high population. Low birth rate, low population. Are we together? So that is yes, that about the birth rate of any country. The birth rate of any country. Death rate is another concept. Death rate. Of course, you know, these two concepts and natural in the life of a man, whether it's the birth or death. These two things are natural. So death rate, the death rate or mortality rate of a country, it refers to the rates at which people, both adults and children, die in a country. The rate at which people, whether it's an adult or children, die in a country is referred to as the death rate. What is the rate at which adults die? What is the rate at which children die? So that is death rate. Generally, high death rate leads to population decrease or low population, while the low death rate leads to increase in population. When there is high death rate, of course, when somebody dies, even though they are also given birth to, 
but there is a reduction in number. Are you getting it now? There is a reduction in number. While when, because of some prevailing circumstances or factors, the rate of death rate is low, it will increase the population. Imagine if in Nigeria, in a particular year, there is nobody that will die, but people are given Amen. birth. Huh? So it will lead to increase in the population. It will lead to increase in population. All right, so that is that about the death rate of any country. All right. What are the population distribution pattern we have in the world today? Population distribution pattern. Population distribution pattern. All over the world, population is not evenly distributed. That is a fact. All over the world, population is not evenly distributed. What do we mean by that? It means in some areas, you have high population. In some areas, the population are low. That is why we said they are not evenly distributed. Some areas are densely populated, while some areas are moderately populated, and some others are sparsely populated. And of course, there are a lot of factors that will give birth to these patterns of distribution. The factors may include soil, relief, mineral resources, commercial activities, industrial activity, or pressure on social amenities. All these and many more factors are what would give birth to the pattern of population distribution of any country. While we were talking about settlement in one of our classes, I told you one of the factors that will make people to settle in a place. And one of the factors I mentioned was soil, mineral resources, agricultural activities. All these are what forms the pattern of population distribution. Are you, get, are you getting what I'm saying now? So the population of the world may be densely, moderate, or sparsely populated, depending on the prevailing circumstances. Depending on the prevailing circumstances is what determines the population of any place. Now, the pattern of the world is grouped into three. The pattern of the world population is grouped into three. The very densely populated areas, the moderately populated areas, and the sparsely populated areas of the world. So these are the patterns. We have three major patterns, the densely, moderately, and sparsely populated pattern, population pattern of the world. The densely populated areas are placed where there is more persons per unit area. And you have densely populated, uh, densely populated areas mostly common in industrialized region of the world. The industrialized regions of the world are naturally densely populated. In areas where you have industry, those areas are naturally populated. Why? Because there are a lot of opportunities there. As it were, people tend to move towards those areas. 
because there are opportunities there. So let's look at the four areas that are densely populated in the world. Number one, you have the industrial Northwest Europe. Industrial Northwest Europe. Number two, industrial Northeastern USA. And under that, this is the great industrial belt of the United States and also Canada. And they also expand to places like New York, which are very rich in coal and iron. Now, because of the existence of these resources, those places are naturally densely populated. Is that clear? So that is number two. Number three area is the agricultural monsoon Asia. Agricultural monsoon Asia is one of the densely populated areas of the world. This includes countries like China, India, Japan, Pakistan, Indonesia. Then you have a country like Java. All these countries are densely populated. Why? Because these areas, the soil supports large agricultural practice. And because they support large agricultural practice, people move towards these areas. Pamela, what is amazing you? Pamela, do you have a question? No, sir. Okay. Okay, so these are the agricultural monsoon Asia. So these areas are of the largest population concentration in the world. Why? Because the soil are fertile. The soil is fertile, the climate is warm, and also there is abundant rainfall which promotes agriculture. Now all these factors put together gives rise to a densely populated regions or countries of the world. You can imagine a country that has fertile soil, warm climate, abundant rainfall. That is all agriculture needs. That is what agriculture needs. When these factors are there, the population naturally will move to those areas. Number four, densely populated area is the Nile Valley and Delta. Mercy, where is the Nile? Mercy. She don't hear on. Mercy. Where is the Nile fine? River Nile. Where is it found? Sir? River Nile. In Egypt. In Egypt. In where? Simo Salas compound. Sir. Mercy, where is the Nile? Sir, in Egypt. Mosala's compound. Egypt. Okay. The Nile is found in Egypt. Hello? Let's have one class, please. The Nile is found in Egypt. That is why there is a popular saying that says, no Nile, no Egypt. Egypt, as you know, is in the North Africa. It's a Northern African country, and it's almost likened to a desert. But because there is, the, the, because the Nile is there, it has given birth to a large agricultural activity. As a matter of fact, agriculture in Egypt is throughout the year. Whether there is rain, there is no rain, agricultural activity is going on there. So this is essentially in Egypt. It's an area within the Sahara Desert, which through irrigation has converted a desert into an area of high agricultural activities. And in return, 
it has led to a high population because of the high level agricultural activities they carry out through irrigation it has given rise to high population so that is the fourth densely populated area of the world now let's look at the moderately populated parts of the world these are the moderately populated parts of the world number one you have the cool temperate forest of Europe, Canada, and Asia. Number two, you have the temperate tropical grassland of the southern continent. Number three, you have the agricultural as part of the United States of America. You have the Mediterranean Europe, Africa and most parts of Southeast Asia. All these countries or continents that we have mentioned are places where the population is moderate. The population of these areas are moderate. They are moderate. Now let's look at the sparsely populated areas. Don't forget, we said the distribution pattern are three. The densely, the moderate, and the sparsely populated regions of the world. Now we are looking at the sparsely populated parts of the world. You have the, polar, uh, the cold polar lands of Arctic and the Antarctica, which are not inhabited due to the cold weather. Talking about the Arctic and the Antarctica, when we were talking, looking at the globe, talking about the lines of latitude, if you have not forgotten, we talked about the lines of latitude. If you look at the Arctic, the Arctic are found around the poles, in the northern and the southern poles. And because they are found at the northern and the southern poles, those areas are very cold. Why are they cold? Their distance from the equator, their distance from the equator is very far. Their distance from the equator is very, very far. And because the distance from the equator is far, they tend to be very cold. As a matter of fact, people are not living there because the weather is very, very cold. Number two, sparsely populated area of the world the canadian and the tundra and the greenland also due to cold weather number three the high mountains of the himalayas the, rockies, the high mountain of the himalayas the rockies and parts of the andes due to rugged relief and mostly cold weather all these places that you see that the population is very few, majorly is because of the weather. The weather there are extremely cold, and because they are extremely cold, people tend not to settle or live in those areas. Is that clear? Okay, so that is the sparsely populated areas of the world. Also, you have places like the hot deserts of the world, the hot deserts of the world, like the Kalahari, the Atacama, the Sahara, because the weather is very hot and there is dryness with no rainfall. Most desert areas do not have a high population because in those areas, the weather is so hot and dry and there is no rainfall. So because the weather is not too conducive for human habitation, very few people stay there or very few people 
are no. living there. That is why, in terms of land area, Niger, which is a, which is the which is in the Sahara, is bigger than Nigeria in terms of land. Are we together, please? So the Sahara Desert is very very hot. As it were, people do not settle in those places. Also, another sparsely populated area of the world is the densely tropical rainforest. The rainforest is so dense with all manner of trees that you can hardly find a person that would want to settle down there. You have the densely tropical rainforest of the Amazon in South America, the Congo in the Zaire Basin, also in Central Africa. All these are jungles. And because they are jungles, the population of those areas are very, very few. The population. So we have a house here. You said? We have a house there. I didn't hear you. We have a house there. Hello. Where? <laughs> Hello, where? It's in the Amazon. Have you been there before? Oh, yeah. It's it's like one country in the Amazon. It's a Europe. No. It's a Pony. It's a Europe. It's a one country in South America. Uh, Elio has not left. Elio, you said? Brazil. Brazil. Good. Brazil is one. Okay. So all these countries in South America or the Amazon Basin have a very low population. Why? Because the area is mostly rain forest. The area is mostly rain forest. Okay. Now, having said that, any question, please? Any question? Any question? Okay, in the absence of no questions, I have questions for you. There we are it. Pamela, what is population? Pamela, on your video. What is population? Sir, you not start the class with you. No, it doesn't matter. The population. Pamela, I'm listening. Pamela, I am listening. Edward, help us. Edward, where? Yeah. Edward, Edward, sir, help us with the definition of population. Sir. Okay, sir. Sir, Checking population. Sir, I listen. I'm listening now. The population is defined as the total number of people living in a country or a geographical area at a All particular right. time. Hmm. Very good. Please, can you clap for Edward for me? Eddie. I don't think you have it. Alex. Yeah. Alex, mention one population concept. The death rate. You said? Death rate. I didn't hear you. The death rate. Okay, death rate. Very good. Mark. Another concept. Uh, Mark. Overpopulation. Overpopulation. Uh, Joba. Another concept. Mark. Uh, optimum population. Optimum population. Ayuba. Another Mark. concept. Sir. Sir. Ayuba. Mark. Another yes, concept. Ayuba, another concept. 
I'm hearing you. It's a concept of population now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another concept. David Kisabo, concept of population. Kisabo. So, how are you born? David. <laughs> yes, yes man. Boss of them. David. Sir. One concept of population. Mark, Another yeah. concept. Shut up. <laughs> Edward, you see my missing. Mark, another concept. David. Okay. What are the David patterns answer. of world population? Patterns. Patterns of world population. Faith. Mention one pattern of world population. Faith. Sir. One pattern of population distribution. All right, moderately populated areas. Okay, Joba, another pattern. Mark. Joba, another pattern. Mark, another pattern. Mark, another pattern. Yes, Joba. Another pattern of world population distribution. Yes. Isaac. Sanet or Joba. Tag Jesse. Joba. Tag Mark. Tag Jesse. Jesse Aku. Tag Mark. Mark to you. Tag Edward. How again? One pattern. Tag Mark. <laughs> I said one Back pattern mark. of population yeah, distribution. Eh? Population distribution, one pattern. Back mark. That's Edward. <laughs> Edward, you being good. That's <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Edward, you being good. <laughs> Alex. That's Mark. Yes, mention one pattern. Edward, you. Ah. Yes. Alex, I'm off your video now. Me only say they copy. Ah. Yes. Edward, the sparsely populated area. Okay, sparsely populated areas. Very good. Okay. Having said that, you are still you are still going to have an assignment. Okay, sir. Mark, shut up. And the assignment, Aiba, shut up. Is that you are still reading about world population. Oh, yeah, I keep quiet. That was nice one, Edward. I am hearing this noise. I don't like it. That's going to read about population. What we have done today is an aspect of the topic population. We will still talk more in our next class about population. That will be next week by the special yes, group. So, so these notes will be sent to you. Any question? Okay. Any question? Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, what is your question? No, sir. No, sir. Should I write short notes? You say? Tamak is making noise. I didn't hear you. Tamak is making noise. How do you ask them to lay eggs? Okay, in the absence of no question, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and have a nice day. Take care of yourselves. Sadu <laughs> trees grow. Sadu trees grow. Okay, Sadu hostage DX.